हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू योर बायो क्लास इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो लेसन आल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी क्वेश्चन आंसर्स रिलेटेड टू द चैप्टर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन एनिमल्स एंड प्लांट्स फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज ट्रांसलोकेशन आंसर ट्रांस transportation of food that is made by the leaves to the different parts of the plant in the form of a solution is called as translocation next question is explain the meaning of transpiration we can write answer like this the process by which plants get rid of excess water in the form of water vapor through these stomatal pores present on the surface of the leaves is called transpiration it produces cooling effect in plants and also helps to transport water and minerals to the top of the plant by creating a suction pull next question is what is plasma answer plasma is the liquid part of the blood it is yellow sticky fluid which has 90% water and 3.5% of the common salt red blood cells white blood cells and platelets remain suspended in the plasma next question is what is the function of red blood cells Red blood cells contain red pigments hemoglobin which provide red color to the blood moreover hemoglobin combines with the oxygen to form an unstable compound oxyhemoglobin and transports it to all the parts of the body and ultimately to all the cells next question is why is the color of blood red we can write answer red blood cells present in the blood contains red pro colored protein called as hemoglobin which actually makes the blood look red next question is what is meant by artificial kidney what is it used for we can have answer like this in the process called as dialysis blood of a person having failure of both the kidneys is filtered regularly by using a machine which is called as dialysis machine or artificial kidney or sometimes we call it as kidney machine also a kidney machine removes urea and other waste salts from the blood of a person having damaged kidneys by filtering it next question is what is the difference between osmosis and diffusion children osmosis is the movement of solvent molecules from the region of their higher concentration to the region of their lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane example the absorption of water molecules from the soil through the roots of the plant occurs through osmosis diffusion the movement of the particles from their higher concentration to the region of lower concentration till the equilibrium is achieved is called diffusion example gaseous exchange in the body cells occurs through diffusion next question is how do plants take in food water and minerals plants take in food water and minerals with the help of vascular tissues which includes a special type of tissues known as xylem and phloem xylem carries water and minerals from the roots to the leaves of the plants whereas phloem carries food from leaves to other parts of the plant next question is it like this 
What is the function of the kidneys in excretion? Explain. The function of kidneys is to filter the blood to remove urea. Each kidney contains thousands of tiny filters called as nephrons. When blood passes through the nephrons in the kidneys, they filter the blood and remove urea and other unwanted salts from it. The liquid left in the kidneys is yellowish liquid called as urine. Urine formed in kidneys goes into the urinary bladder through the tubes called as ureters. Urine is stored in the urinary bladder from where it is passed out from the body at regular intervals through the opening at the end of a tube called as urethra. Next question. Explain the process of transportation of water and food by xylem and phloem. We can have answer like this. Xylem carries water and minerals dissolved in it from roots upwards through the stem and branches up to the leaves. The xylem tissue forms a continuous network of tubular vessels that connect the roots to the leaves through the stem and branches and thus transports them to the leaves of the entire plant. Water rises from roots upwards because of the suction pull generated by the transpiration. The phloem tissue forms a network of vessels that connect the leaves to all the parts of the plants including roots and thus transports food to the entire plant. The food which is made in the leaves during photosynthesis consists of glucose and it is transported in the form of glucose solution. The force needed to push the glucose solution in the phloem vessel is generated by the living phloem cells present in the phloem tissue of the plant. Next question is how does excretion take place in plants? Actually plants lack a well developed excretory system like those in animals. Plants get rid of waste products in the following ways. Gaseous waste products such as carbon dioxide produced during respiration and oxygen produced during photosynthesis are removed with the help of stomatal pores present on the surface of the leaves. Excess of water is also excreted from the plant body through stomatal pores by the process called as transpiration. Organic byproducts generated in the plants such as gums, oils, latex, resins, etc. gets stored in the different parts of the plant such as barks, stems, leaves, etc. And eventually plants shed off these parts to get rid of them. Next very important question is explain the human circulatory system. If you can remember we have discussed all these topics in detail in some of the previous videos. However, we can write answer here like this. Human circulatory system consists of heart blood vessels such as arteries, veins and capillaries and of course the blood. The entire process of circulation in the human body is as follows. During inhalation, oxygen reaches the lungs which have tiny air sacs called as alveoli. These alveoli are richly supplied with the blood capillaries. Here, oxygen moves from lungs to the blood. Through the pulmonary vein, oxygen-rich blood enters the left auricle from where it is pumped into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, the blood finally enters into aorta, which is also called as mother artery after which it is applied to various organs of the body through a network of arteries. Now, carbon dioxide formed as a product of respiration by the cells returns back to the heart along with the blood with the help of two vena cavas 
which put carbon dioxide rich blood into the right auricle and from right auricle blood enters into the right ventricle and finally reaches the lungs through pulmonary artery again an exchange of gases takes place in the lungs and carbon dioxide moves out of the blood into the lungs after which it is exhaled out during one complete cycle blood passes through the heart twice that is why it is called as double circulation next question is to describe about the blood vessels and their types answer is blood vessels are a network of pathways through which blood travels throughout our body they are of three types arteries veins and capillaries arteries arteries transport oxygenated blood from heart to various body parts except the pulmonary artery you all know that pulmonary artery takes the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs they have thick and elastic walls and of course arteries are deeply seated in our body veins veins carry the oxygenated blood from various body parts to the heart except the pulmonary vein you all know that pulmonary vein brings oxygenated blood from lungs to the left auricle veins have thin walls and they are located close to the surface of the skin capillaries arteries divide into extremely thin branches on reaching the tissues which are called as capillaries they have walls which are one cell thick the exchange of materials between the blood and the surrounding cells take place through this thin wall itself next question is explain different types of blood vessels we can have answer like this there are three types of blood cells these are as follows rbc that is red blood cell they are disc shaped cells and are red in color due to presence of red pigment hemoglobin in them hemoglobin combines with oxygen to form unstable compound oxyhemoglobin which is ultimately transported to the body cells oxygen is used up by the body cells for respiration and hemoglobin becomes free to carry more oxygen wbc that is white blood cell white blood cells or leukocytes are the cells of immune system which unlike mature rbc contains nucleus but lack hemoglobin they are involved in protecting our body from infections they are able to move on their own next is blood blood platelets they are tiny fragments of a special cells formed in the bone marrow they help in clotting of the blood in wound or cut so that's all for this video lesson goodbye everyone